I would have been like the last person in the world anyone would ever think would be successful. I'm Lauren Euler, and for this episode of Broadly Meets, we're talking with Marilyn Minter in her studio in Midtown Manhattan. Marilyn Minter's iconic paintings, photographs, and videos are often very big and very erotic. Minter grew up in the South, and her first serious artwork focused on her mother, who used a glamorous physical appearance to mask a drug addiction. Minter moved to New York in the 1970s, where she immediately began to partake in the famous Manhattan nightlife of the time. After getting sober in the 80s, she began to take her work much more seriously, engaging with topics like pornography, advertising, and various shitty portrayals of women in the media. Minter has had several solo shows, and her first retrospective, Pretty Slash Dirty, is currently traveling across America, and it will be on display at the Brooklyn Museum in 2016. Minter's process is to combine analog negatives in Photoshop to create a digital composite image, which she then uses as a reference for a painting. Minter and her assistants work directly from this new image, applying many layers of enamel paint to an aluminum canvas. It can take months to create one artwork. This is a beautiful woman who happens to have wrinkles. Okay. And they don't exist in the culture. I wouldn't say any of these wrinkled beauties would be considered sexual. Mm -hmm. I would call that one sexual, though. The mouth. Yeah, I realize that there is sexuality in a lot of my images, but it's not the majority of my images. Right. Nobody writes about wrinkles or pubic hair. <laughs> and, the, and the pubic hair, I never tried to make sexual, I just tried to make it beautiful. But can we go look at the pubic hair? Sure, sure, sure. This is called Thigh Gap. I'm gonna put it in my show. Okay, yeah, it's, I think it's great. And then this one I'm gonna start. You haven't started. No. Is it gonna be on this board? This one, yeah. Do you have a name for like what phase of the oh, process? Oh, she's first, this first coat. First coat. It's going to be a long time before that's finished. Okay. I saw people hitting it with their fingers over and over and over again. Yeah, that's how we soften it. Okay. Just the last layer. He's a finisher, I'm a finisher, there's one other finisher. Okay. Is it ever difficult to shoot intimate? Not like, anymore. Ever? Not anymore? No, but it was when I first saw it. What do you mean? First time I shot. Right. Pubic hair? Was it like terrifying? <laughs> <laughs> well, how were the girls though? She wasn't a model. Okay. She was my practice. Okay. And uh, she was really insecure too. Right. But by the end of it, I'm like styling it. <laughs> I want to talk more about your work. Okay. And how does a piece go from a thing that you see in your mind to a thing that you see in the wall? The kind of work I make is very analytical. It takes a really long time. It's labor intensive. There might be 20 to 80 layers of Photoshop. A drip here from this negative, a splash on the glass there. How long have you been doing that since you said 97? I did my own version before I got my hands on Photoshop. I just altered things mm -hmm. just by drawing it. And are you ever embarrassed of by the everything. old stuff? Right? Yeah, yeah, I do. Are no, you like, oh, I don't God, know. why does it exist? I don't know because I destroyed all the stuff I did when I was, uh, I really did just destroy it. Really? Tore it all up, threw it away. Yeah. Wow. This was in the 80s, the early 80s, and I wanted to be part of the art dialogue and everyone would come in my studio and say, you gotta loosen up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought, well, if I got high enough, I could loosen up because I had no faith in myself. Where did you find the faith in yourself? Uh, well, I helped getting clean and sober. Right, yeah. And then I started trusting my inner voice, basically. But I know now with enough experience that you need those failures to make something interesting. Did people see potential in you? Did they, no. did, did no. they think no. that you like, didn't fit in? I never fit in. Okay. Well, I was always a really rebellious kid. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I was put in jail at 16. For what? Changing driver's licenses. Everyone would just type something and it looked so phony. Mm -hmm. But I could draw a three or a nine or a... Oh, so you drew I drew the typed letters, license. yeah. Oh, okay. So when so you were So we were 14 at... going into the bar. <laughs> <laughs> With your driver's licenses that you drew. 16, yeah. And I had braces on my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so you got caught and you got arrested. I got caught. I was making money off of it. Oh, well, okay. So, I was a very bad kid. <laughs> were you ever in trouble for anything else with the law? All the time. Oh, yeah. I was always in trouble. I was sent to this dean of students every week. Really? <laughs> yeah. And I remember the dean, the female dean of students said, you're not a bad kid, you're just bored. 
In an era when pornographic images were not available anytime, anywhere, Minter's work scandalized critics. Her paintings use erotic imagery and sexuality, and they made many people uncomfortable. When did you start making these sort of really erotic pieces? Well, I, you know, there's something about owning sexual agency and you're female. It's very threatening. Yeah. So maybe I make it my mission to own it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I'm being sexual per se. I just think I'm making my vision. Okay. And I own sexual agency every chance I get. Why are you interested in frost and, and steam right now? I have a piece of glass in front of everything. Mm -hmm. The water, the wetness, the dripping is another barrier to just dampen the narrative. So it's, I'm not telling you what to think. Mm -hmm. There's like a way to get some distance. You know, people have been making realistic paintings for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And now I think um, I'm trying to zone in on the overlooked. Minter uses what she calls imperfections as a way to criticize contemporary portrayals of women. She mixes glamour with grit, the gorgeous with the grotesque. When she paints high heels, they're kicking through muddy water, and when she paints pearls or gemstones, they're in a model's mouth. Is beauty part of the goal? I'm interested in the things that are, the culture calls debased or low culture. Okay. Because I think it's a lot more powerful than received ideas of what, what's important. Okay. I definitely think I contributed to Freckles being in the commercial world. Okay. That and wet. Wet. <laughs> and a little dirty. Real dirt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or paint. So you talk a lot about imperfections and like that's what you like to bring out in the freckles and the sort of dirty stuff. If I came to you and I have a lot of money, say, or you just saw me in the street and you were like, I want to make a painting or a photograph of you, what would you want to make a photograph of? I wouldn't. <laughs> you're too cool. pretty. Yeah, you too. Who wants to see another picture of a pretty girl? So I'm not interested in doing anything that uh, tells you exactly what to think. Mm -hmm. And when I get criticized, it's usually because I'm not scolding. What do you mean by that? What I'm always trying to do is make a picture of what it feels like to look. And there's levels of emotions that, ha that go on when you see a, a glamorous image. Mm -hmm. It gives you an enormous pleasure. It gives me enormous pleasure at the same time. I know I'm never going to look like that and nobody really looks like that. So there's this love-hate thing going on. And there's even a little shame because you should be looking at things a lot more less shallow than uh, glamorous images. Do you feel like your work is important? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you think you're a genius? I think there's a lot of geniuses, let me put it that way. Okay. And you're one of them? Uh, well, I think I'm one of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. But like I said, there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I could name 20. Yeah. Yeah, right off the top of my head. I think it's, uh, you know, there's a plenty of people making marvelous things, just things that make me glad to be alive. At what point did you realize you'd sort of, like, made it? I don't feel like I've made it now. Really? Yeah. But don't yeah. Beyonce and Jay-Z have, like, a, one of your paintings? Yeah, in their house? they have a few things. Yeah. Well, well, that doesn't mean anything. They don't have any of my paintings. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, no, I mean, you cannot get satisfaction from success. That does not make you a happy person or even a contented person. Mm -hmm. but for, well, yeah, that's not true. You can have a few minutes or maybe an hour, maybe yeah. even a week. Yeah. But it's not going to be fulfilling ultimately. But so it's anything. It really feels, I think when people talk about the creative process being so rewarding is it feels so good to make something you love. I think I'm, I, I probably communicate my, with my ideas with your age group better than my own, mm -hmm. which I'm really gratified by. Really? Yeah. I talk to a lot of people who say my age group is really good. Like, we're doing a good job. Oh, God, I love the millennials. Are you a millennial? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you give me hope. Thank you. We try. Yeah. We're trying.